Hello and welcome. I am Craig Sirkanik, an industry process consultant at Dassault Systems. Thank you for joining me today for another installment in our Shop Floor Machining Foundation series. In this series, we take a deep dive into how to effectively use shop floor machining, along with tips and best practices for effectively applying machining toolpath. Today's topic, using a generic machine along with the machine wizard to program two sides of a part. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create toolpath using the wizard and a non-kinematic machine or a generic machine. We're going to start with an open part in product structure design, as you see here. I will click on the compass and click shop floor machining. From here, shop floor machining will open. The part will automatically be in a manufacturing cell inside an assembly, this assembly here. If we look at our machining wizard, you'll notice that the product is defined indicated by the check. For the next step, I will select a generic machine. Then I will select a five axis machine. At this point, you can see we have resources pulled in. We want to create some rough stock to go around the part itself. Select rough stock. The stock creation window appears. Make sure the tree tab is displayed. We are going to look in this area as we work to better understand what is happening. Under location, select the container to place the rough stock we are about to create in. Click the button and select the main assembly. You will notice we automatically get a new physical product that comes in. In the mode area, Click the button, select part body. Then click on the part in the software window. To add material, adjust the parameters below and the yellow body will adjust. For our example, we will leave it as a bounding box and hit OK. At this point, the stock has been created, but it hasn't been selected or identified in this manufacturing cell. Click on the Edit Part Operation button from the wizard. The Part Operation window will open. First, let's define the local coordinate location and direction. Select the pencil next to the origin name. Leave or change Selection Mode to From Directions. Select the origin name. Select this corner. My Z orientation is correct, but X needs adjusting. Click on X direction to edit. Select the line running in X and toggle the reverse button to indicate the direction, as indicated by the red arrow. Click OK. Check NC origin output to produce a local coordinate call to the tape. Click OK. We will return to the part operation. Click the strategy tab and select activate intermediate stock. Change the stock clearance value to zero. Go back to the geometry tab. Select the words rough stock and click the silhouette of the rough stock. Double click the white bar at the top to accept. Go to the standard tab and expand the hide show buttons. Click Hide Show Stock. The stock should hide. This indicates it has been selected correctly. With the stock off, let's select our design part the same way we selected our rough stock. Next, we define a safety plane by clicking the words Safety Plane. Then left click on the top of the part. This will return us to the part operation window. Enter an offset value. We have defined our part operation successfully. Looking at the wizard, we see that the tools are the next item. Click the resource creation button. The resource creation window appears. From this window, we will select an end mill item. The NC resource window appears. Let's change the name. There are two areas where we can enter geometrical values. The first being the screen. You can double click 
and then type the value. The second being the edit parameters button. I will enter values here. Click OK, and our end mill has been created. I will also create a drill. Select drilling items, select drill tool. The NC resource window appears. Enter values the same as we did for the end mill. The diameter of this drill will be 0.266. Click OK to accept, and the drill will be created. Click the X to close the resource creation window in the upper right hand corner. If we look at the tree tab, we can see two newly created tools. We can see that tools have been created. From here, we will do a global feature recognition. To do that, I will go to my Axial Machining tab, and I will find Global Feature Recognition. If it is not visible, go ahead and bring this up. We will click Global Feature Recognition. If I highlight there, we will then select the body here. Make sure everything is checked. The Advanced tab we will leave alone. Axial filters will have nothing checked. In the pattern, we want to check by diameter, and then we want to pull by the thread parameters. Here, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It will extract all machinable features that it finds. We are going to machine two pockets on the first side of this part, as indicated here. Two items need to be first set so your screen matches mine. Simple tool selection, and in the manufacturing view, tab viewing option. For simple tool selection, tool that does not include a holder, we must adjust a preference. Open preferences and check the allow selection of simple tool in activity option. Let us set the view option in the manufacturing view tab so that your options match mine on the screen. In the manufacturing view tab, ensure you have three buttons in the upper left that look like this. If your button options look like this, select the tree view button on the far left of that group shown here. Your settings should match mine for this exercise, and we are ready to program. Define our first pocket. Go to the Prismatic Machining tab. Select the Pocketing button. The Workflow toolbar appears. This toolbar is selectable by clicking on the arrow. The Focused arrow will display a message of what is needed for that step. Since we have no current operations, no tools are being used. Tool Search window will appear. The selections here are reflected in the Resource Configuration View tab. First, select the component criteria to select a tool. Currently, we only have tool components in the cell. This selection not only filters, but also affects your ability to select. Select the End Mill Tool button. Once you see the created End Mill in the Resource Configuration View, left click to select it. Sometimes your tool is not shown in that resource configuration view. If this happens, click on the Tree tab and select it from the tree directly. We return to the Activities Process View tab. Remember, this is where all machine operations reside. The system is now asking for a feature selection, as indicated by the Select Feature message. The system should take you to the Manufacturing View tab. If it does not, Go to the Manufacturing View tab. In the upper left corner, there are three buttons. Select the Filter button in the middle. A filter window will appear. Ensure Prismatic Machining Area is checked. Click the Filter button again to hide the selections. Expand the NC assembly, and you should see your part. Expand your part, and you should see two Prismatic Machining Areas. As you hover over the features, 
They will be outlined in white on the part in the screen. Select Pocket 1 or the first pocket in the list of features. The Machine Operation window appears. We are on the Geometry tab and we can see the feature driving this path is selected. Select the Display button to see the toolpath we have created. Select Escape or the Exit button to Exit Display. Select OK. Return to the Activities Process View tab. Right click on the pocket that was just created and select Copy or Control and C. Right click again on the same pocket and select Paste or Control V. Delmia places a copy of the pocket below the selected operation and opens it. We are on the Geometry tab. Select the Feature button. We will be presented with the Manufacturing View tab. Select the second pocket or prismatic machining area. We return to the machine operation with the feature driving the operation, as seen here. Select Display to view the toolpath. Select Escape or Exit button to exit display. You can see the progress in the shop floor machining wizard. Now we will machine the features on side two. Click the Activities Process view, then select the last pocketing operation. Delmia places our next operation after this selection. Rotate the part to see the counterbores we will machine. Click on the Axial Machining tab, then select Drilling. The workflow toolbar appears. For the mode, the Quick Settings drop-down is set to Drilling. Click the green check to accept. The tool is the next in the workflow. It is already selected from the previous operation, so our workflow toolbar moves to the feature. An end mill is currently selected. However, I would like to change it to use the drill. Left-click on the tool arrow in the workflow toolbar. The tool search window appears. This window filters the tool type based on the operation, so a drill is selected. Select the drill in the Resource Configuration View tab. We move to the geometry in the Workflow Toolbar, but the feature has not been selected yet. Left-click on the Feature arrow. Select the Manufacturing View if it is not automatically shown. Select the uppermost pattern to select the counterbores. We return to our machine operation on the Geometry tab. Select Display to view the toolpath. As we rotate the part around, I notice that we are drilling only to the depth of the counterbore. Let's fix that. Click Escape or the Exit button to exit simulation. In our Geometry, go to the Geometry Parameters section we will see a start level and an end level. Change the end level to 2. Select Display to view the toolpath. We can see we are now drilling to depth. Click Escape or the Exit button to exit the toolpath. Select OK to accept. We now have toolpaths on both sides of the part. To complete programming, we need a local coordinate system for side 2. Right click on the operation to assign a local coordinate system. In our case, the latest drilling operation. Select Assign Local Axis System. The Define Local Axis window appears. Select the plus sign next to the name. Make sure Selection Mode is set to From Directions. Select the green check. Change the name to Side 2. Select the name Origin to define. Select the back left corner. We return to our definition window. Select the name Z Direction to define. Toggle the Reverse Direction button to see the direction of the arrow. Select OK. Do the same for the X direction if needed. Confirm 
NC origin output is checked. We return to the Define Local Axis window and select OK. We verify we are using the local coordinate system by viewing it in the tree. Select the panel divider and drag to expand. My settings currently show the local axis system and side 2 is present. This indicates that the local axis is active for that operation. If your settings do not show local axis system, move your cursor to the Attribute Manager button, middle button on the right, and left click. Find Local Axis System and click the eye to the left to view it as a column. Then drag it up or down to indicate the column position to the right of the machining operation. Select the Attribute Manager again to close the panel. Simulate all paths to verify. Select the Manufacturing Program and press Play button in the compass. On the right, expand the flyout and select Simulation Options. Change the radio button to every one compute steps. Select the Meatball menu from the Player tab and click on the Speed and Time settings. Set the speed to the slowest setting. This is also controlled with the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. Select the View tab and click ISO. Go back to the Player tab and select Play. We have successfully applied Toolpath following the wizard using a generic machine.